Hello guys, Andrew, welcome back. In our last lesson, we learned about Python exceptions and we saw how we could create exceptions and using the try, accept, and then the finally blocks and see how we could also raise exceptions and catch exceptions in Python. If you wanna learn more about exceptions, please click the link and check out this video. In today's lesson, what we're going to do is learn how to create files using Python. So to begin, let's create a new project file a new project file and i'll just save this and i'll just call this uh, python file dot py so we actually have this python file and i use control b just to hide this screen and just to give us a much more presentable working space so uh what we're going to do is to just uh, see how we can uh, do that to create files in Python, we can use the keyword open. So I'll just use a comment and I'll just say working with files in Python. So you can actually do open. And once you do that, open is a function that's built into Python and then you can open a file. So I'll just say super file dot txt and I'll pass in an argument here which is called R, just the letter R, and which is actually a read mode. There are other arguments which will be looked, well, we'll look into when we're in the course of this uh, project. So this is one way we can do this. We can actually store this value here in a variable so we can print out information that's stored in that file. So I'll just say super, super file is going to be equal to open superfile.txt in my read mode. If I run this, this is going to return an error because that file does not exist. And let's just see that in action. So I'll just save this and I'll run this Python file. And we can see yeah, it actually raised a file not found error, no such file called superfile.txt exists yet. So what we're going to do is to just create a basic text file and then write some information to that text file such that when we open a file, it's not actually going to throw this error. Now, also, whenever you open a file, you need to close the file or else you'll have write uh, input stream errors, especially when you're trying to write a file that's already open. So you're going to have uh, errors. So to do that, I'll just open up Control B to open this up and right here, I'll just do Control N and I'll quickly do a Control X, S, sorry, and I'll just do a super file dot TXT. And no, notice where I save this. I'm saving this within my Python project like so. All right, so I have super file dot TXT and I'll just open that, uh, sorry, that file's already opened up. And let's just write some basic information. So I'll say hi there. I am a super empty file. Nothing to see here. So that's our file. So I'll just go ahead and close this. And what I also like to do is to create a function that is going to read the file and print out information we have on that file. So right now, if I wanted to print this file, I'll just say print and I'll do a super file dot and I'll call the read method. The super file dot read method is going to read the well, function or data that's installed in that file rather. So let's just quickly see this in action. And let's clear our screen. Let's save this and let's run it again. So we're still getting that error. And I think what we need to do is to make sure that this file, let's see where we place this file code. I wanna place this file outside like so uh, good so i'll just save that so i have this file within my code context so let's save that again and run this program 
so we don't actually uh, see that error and we actually see the output and it says uh, hi there I'm a super empty file nothing to see here again I'm going to show you how you can uh, find the path to a file and then you know tell Python to find that file wherever that file is because it's not every time you have your file within your root folder you could actually have your file elsewhere even on a web server or on, on another desktop or system on a local server and you need to access that uh, file so uh, let's move on so I want to create a function and I'll place this in that function so to do that I'll just say uh, def oops def basic reading because I'm out of ideas and I'll select everything here and indent this to the right and also you need to close your file each time you uh, are done so I'm just going to say super file dot close like so so let's call the basic reading method so each time we call basic reading it simply means we're actually calling this function to read that file so I'll just run without debugging and we can actually see this information right here so uh, let's actually uh, do a much more preferred way of doing this we could actually try uh, reading the file and then we'll try and catch an error so let's see how we can do that so uh, I'll create another function I'll call that def let's see reading file error and what we're going to do is to try to read a file that does not exist so here I'll just create a variable and I'll say our file is going to be equal to I'll open and what I'll do is just pass in a file called sample.txt like so so now I have that so let's try uh, let's actually try doing that so we'll say try doing this reading this file and we need our accept block so I'll do a accept so I'll do a file not found error and we can actually return the error as file error and what we're going to do next is to print that information for that error so I'm going to print out file does not currently exist I'll do a comma I'll go over here and then we'll pass in the uh, error message so I'll just say error message and then here we'll just do a comma and I'll just say file error so basically the information that's here is going to be placed in this position right here because I'm returning the file not found error as an error so let's call the math function and see and I'll comment out this function so we don't uh, clog our clutter our screen so I'm just going to say reading file oops reading file error so let's run that and let's run this program and see so it says file does not currently exist error message is passing that error no, no such file or directly directory sample.txt which is actually true because we don't have that file in our workspace right here so we are actually uh, we're not going to see anything when we call that file now let's uh, let's try to open an existing file and then read the line or the content in that file when we run our uh, first example we actually read the file right here because of this our flag so I'll comment this out and let's see this example so I'll just add a few spaces right here so I'll just add a comment I'll say uh, let's read the data in a file 
So here I'm just going to create a variable and I'll say uh, existing file is going to be equal to, and I should use a try except block as well. So I'm going to try and don't forget the indentation. Existing file is equal to open. And I'll use my uh, super file dot txt. And I'll use my R flag. That means I want to read the content within that file. And I'm simply going to print out our existing file dot read method. So basically this is going to read that file. And then what we're actually going to do next is to accept a uh, file not found error in case that file does not exist. And I'll say as file error. And I'll just cheat here. I'll just cheat and pick the same information right here. And always remember the indentation. If you do it here, it's going to show you an error. So just tab out one space so you don't actually have that. So, but what we actually do right now is to add a finally block. So I'll do a finally, which simply means what happens when we actually catch an error or we don't catch an error, basically what happens. So I'm going to close the file. So I'll say existing file dot close and quickly save that. So once I've closed that file, I'm simply going to print out a statement in the finally block and see the file closed like so. And what we're actually going to do again is to just uh, call the function. So let's actually create a function because uh, we don't have a function to store this information. So I'll just call this function, uh, let's say a def I'll just call it read existing file like so. And I'll copy everything down here and tab out one space so that it's a body of this function right here. And to call the function, we're just going to say reading existing file. So sorry, I called it, I called it a uh, read existing file. And here I'm going to say, uh, calling the function. Now, if you have the function in this line as well, it's not going to work. So you need to uh, indent that and just leave it at that intent. So let's run this. And we actually see that information is here. It says, hi there, I'm a super empty file, nothing to see here. And then the finally block ran and it told us the file has been closed because we told it to print that uh, information. So let's see how we can read the file from a specified path. So we know that that file is resting somewhere on our uh, operating system. So to get that file path, I'll just go ahead and show you how you can do that. So I've opened up the location where I have the file, my video, a Visual Studio project is stored. I'll do a Windows R and I'll drag this super file and place it here. This will give me a full path of that file and I can copy that path or I could just simply right click the path and it'll just, I'll just say copy as path. So I'll jump over back, jump back to Visual Studio Code. And right here, what I'm going to do is to create a variable to store the path to that file. So I'll comment this out. And to do that, I'll just say file underscore R is going to be equal to, and I'll just paste that entire path right here. Now there's an issue with, uh, Visual Studio, 
if you want to read this as a single file, what you're going to do is to, uh, you have to read this as a raw file using a letter R in front of it. So this means this is a raw file you're reading directly. And uh, if you don't want to use raw file R, you have to use double backspaces like so, so that you can actually use this as a specified path to the file. So two styles, you can either do it this way or you could just do it uh, this way and then put an R in front of it, which is a raw string. And I'll just see a file underscore R. So that's one way to actually uh, store this file. So our file underscore R is going to be equal to, uh, let's see, open, and then we'll pass in all this information right here within our uh, open function. And then let's not forget our read. So I'll do a comma and then a single quote and then pass R like so. So basically what I'm doing is uh, we're actually reading this file like so. So I'll head over to the, uh, the next line. Just quickly zoom out and then press the return key and zoom in again. So in our next line, what we're actually going to do is to print out the information for our read like we've seen in our example. So let's say print, let's say a file underscore R dot read like so. So we're printing that information. So let's save this and let's see if we have this right here. So let's just save that and let's run it. So we're going to file uh, run without debugging. And we can actually see that information here. It says, hi there, I'm a super empty file. Nothing to uh, read here. We can also read the lines that exist within a text document. So here we only have a single line. Let me just edit this document and add a couple more lines here. So what I'm going to say is, uh, let's just add some information here. So I'll just say, uh, wait, comma, I have a second line now. And then let's add a third line and let's just say I am no longer empty. So I'll save that. So our file now has three lines. So how do we read these lines? I'll just go ahead and hide, uh, hide this guy. So we can actually pass in a text argument to read the specific length of a file. For instance, if I do this, if I say print and I'll say a file underscore R dot read and say just read the first five lines in my document. So you can specify any number as long as it's not so Okay, actually this read the whole thing. So it says I am no longer empty. So let's uh, let's comment this out here. Let's comment this out and save this and run it now. It says hi th. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five. So let's try, let's say 10. Do we have up to 10 characters in our first line? It just says hi there. So well, we actually know our uh, file is longer than that. So we know it is hi, hi there, I'm a super empty line, but we just stopped here because we actually told it to read the first few characters of that line. So how can we also loop through a file in uh, Python? So to loop through that, we can even uh, do a very funny way of doing that. We can actually chain the files. So I'll just comment this out. So let's see, uh, let's do print chaining. 
So what I'm going to do is just do a simple print and I'll use an F string this time around. So I'll print out my line. So I'll say line one. And then we'll pass in the uh, read file as an argument. So I'll say file underscore R dot read line. And the lead line is a function. So I'll just place that right here. And what I'm going to do is to cheat a little bit. So I'll copy this line, drop this, and drop this again. So I'll call this line two and line three. So we can actually see the output of each line. And then when we're done, we are going to close the file. So I'll say a file underscore r dot close to close that uh, file like so. So let's uh, save it and let's run that. So we can see it read uh, red line one using read line. So uh, it read line two and this is the information in line two. And it actually read line three and says I am no longer empty. So that's how you can use this to read lines. If we wanted to, we've actually closed this file right now. So to read the file again, we need to open the file. So then we can actually use a for loop to loop through the file. And we'll use the second style where we use double strokes without the R. Now R means you're reading a raw file. So it's telling Python to ignore this backstroke. So that's what's happening. So let's actually see how we can loop through the file. So I'll say looping through a file. So I'll just do a file underscore r is going to be equal to so let's copy in fact let's just let's take uh, this entire line like so i'll just copy that and drop it right here so we can actually have that information and we're using our double back strokes but what we need to do right now is to make sure we add the open function so i'll say open and since this is a function, I have an opening and closing parentheses. And then right here, at the end, I will need to also provide our additional parameter, which is R, which means we're actually reading this file. So now that we've done that, let's add a uh, print, a simple funny print, just to make sure we actually have information here. So I'll just do this, add a few asterisks and I'll just say file looping and add a few asterisks. You don't have to do this, it's just for a decal. So what we're actually going to do is to use a for loop. So I'll say for content in our file underscore R. So what I want to do is to just print out the content like so. And then finally, once I've printed out that content, I want to close the file. So I'll just see file underscore R dot close. So let's save this and run it. So uh, we can actually see the file looping here. So basically this is where our short code is running and we actually see the for loop has looped through these lines and printed them out. Basically, we did not need to do any chaining right here. Now, if I did not close this file and try to run this, I'm going to get an error. So that's a very, very basic, uh, quick tutorial on reading files with Python. Now, we actually uh, wrote these lines manually well python has extra arguments we can pass in using the open function to actually write out information to a file so you could tell it to create a file and then write information to a file and we'll see how to do that using our try accept and finally block error checking in the next lesson thank you very much for watching